the Super Bowl, or whatever, I'm not American. World's biggest cereal bowl. Oh, nobody's gonna be horny after this. This is what made me asexual. My mom dipped me by my heel into the world's biggest bowl of cornflakes, and here I am. Amazing tags. My ankle is so fucking horny, though. A Victorian. Saving this for the next time someone innocently asks me what Tumblr is. Start every phone call with, my phone is about to die. Then you can hang up whenever you want. Skeletor will return with more introvert tips. Yeah. <laughs> It's fun reading writers who clearly grew up in suburban, urban environments as someone who grew up on a farm, because they're always like, oh, it was so creepy, woods at night, eerily breathtaking, something was living in there, and it's like, yeah, that'll be the deer. City person writing a creepy forest, they heard a sound. Rural person writing a creepy forest, they heard no sound. Exactly! To be totally fair to Willy Wonka, at least a couple of those candy factory casualties involved kids deliberately circumventing reasonable safeguards, sometimes aided and abetted by the parents who were supposed to be supervising them. What happened is, at most, 60% his fault. Oompa Loompa Doopity Dare, the court finds you breached your duty of care. Oompa Loompa Doopity Disc, that's what the courts call assumption of risk. Oompa Loompa Doopity Do, only a partial judgment for you. Oompa Loompa Doopity Doubt, the rest of the class action lawsuit is here by. Throw a tea out! Don't let the world fool you. Consistent kindness is the most quietly powerful thing. If you ever want to engage in villainy and undermine the social order, be especially kind to the people society has rejected. Care about the ones the world would convince you don't deserve your kindness. I genuinely mean this when I say to you, the ultimate act of rebellion is insisting on compassion and grace in a compassionless world. Disruptive compassion. Reblogging because I have a lot of feelings about this and because I believe very strongly in that the most punk rock and badass thing you can do is to live your life with aggressive empathy and kindness. Fred Rogers was the essence of punk. You can't change my mind. Visited a physical therapist today, re my messed up back. We established that I am shockingly flexible in the Pessoas, but I quote, have to work on my glute stability. That's right, I've been diagnosed with weak butt. I'm a weak ass artist, an artist with a weak ass. I've got ifs and ands, but no but. All my gluteuses are minimus. I have an inferior posterior. My rears in arrears. My buns are underbaked. I'd say it'll be the end of my back, but to be fair, that's all an ass is already. Alright, I'm done. You've been sitting on those a while, haven't you? Points at you! Yes! Things I like about this decal on a restaurant window. The insane orange waiter. That he's carrying his plates in the air like a strong man. The couple looks like this isn't the first time he's done this, but it's easier to just let it happen at this point. The sign says, PASTA, as if he's screaming it like a Frankenstein. But he's holding a plate of an entire chicken and a plate of wine glasses. There's three wine glasses. One's for him! This makes me laugh to the point of tears every time I see it. The thing that distinguishes Tumblr shitposts from shitposts on other social media platforms isn't the content, it's the register. The hairpin code-switching between very formal and very vulgar speech. The kind of speech that will use the words increasingly and fuck trumpet in the same sentence. It's the Homestuck accent. Thank you so much! This is the absolute worst way you could have described this speech. <laughs> but it's true! <laughs> U-C or E-R. I stepped on a bee. Urgent care. I stepped on a beehive. Emergency care. I need antibiotics. Urgent care. I need antivenom. Emergency care. UTI. Urgent care. MRI. Emergency care. 
Thump. Urgent care. Thump, thump, thump. Emergency care. This is actually so helpful because as an American living in late stage capitalism, where most people have zero health coverage except for the emergency room, the entire purpose of the ER has lost all meaning on most people. Tragic. 37 clowns were killed today in a devastating one-car pileup. <laughs> the funeral has only one casket. It's what they would have wanted. <laughs> this is so sad. I might start crying. Pulls out a handkerchief. Pulls out a handkerchief. Pulls out a... <laughs> If you don't decouple your drive to create from your desire for attention, you will go insane. Simple as, you will never feel satisfied because you will always want more and you will feel perpetually bitter that you did not get what you are owed. It's an unpopular opinion, but it is absolutely and completely true. I've never seen someone who creates for engagement happy with the engagement they get. I posit they can't ever be happy that way because it will never be enough. My balcony blocks my view of the playground, but I heard one child yell, I found a frog! with a great deal of excitement, and now there is screaming, so I'm filling in some blanks. Situational update. A little girl screamed, Leave him alone! And now there's noises that sound suspiciously like a child getting wailed on by a wiffle ball bat. Further update. Parent has been called to the scene. Distribution of fault is underway. Bat appears to have been confiscated. Bat has been returned, under the promise of not to deploying it once more against brothers. The pause and, but tell him to leave the frog alone, tells me it will likely come back into play shortly. As expected, frog was bothered again, and frog warrior took up her weapon once more. All children are being collected to leave on charges of acting like y'all have no sense. Personally, I stand with frog defender on this issue. Hashtag justice for frog girl. I love that we're still learning shit about this world we're in. Spiders sing? Fish chirp and enjoy tummy rubs? Trees feed each other? Mushrooms can talk? Rats giggle? Crows play games? If you leave a hamster wheel in the woods, mice will run in it. And despite all focus on the contrary, if you leave a handful of human beings alone with the opportunity to do good and be kind, they will. I love this fucking planet so damn much. New Yorkers can take a bite out of capitalism by munching on popsicles shaped like the heads of billionaires. Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Jack Ma, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg near McCarran Park in Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah. You're really showing how much you hate capitalism by... Checks notes. Paying ten dollars for a fucking ice cream. Idiot. They... They gentrified eating the rich! <laughs> Do Japanese people prefer dubbed American cartoons? Interview. English is better for this one. The Japanese translation feels off. We've come full circle. <laughs> oh my god. Fun fact, apparently there is a serious debate in Japan as to whether the King of the Hill sub or dub is better. <laughs> this is something I never knew I was waiting my whole life to read. <laughs> this is something I never knew I was waiting my whole life to read. Beep boop. I look for accidental haiku posts. Sometimes I mess up. A friend of mine tried to sell his soul on eBay, and the starter price was $10, and people were bidding on it. But before anything happened, eBay took it down and sent him an email explaining that if he was selling a soul that didn't actually exist, then it was against their policy. And if he was selling a real soul, then that is a human body part, and it is also against their policy. Well done, eBay, for solving that philosophical conundrum. If you censor anything in a post, you are legally required to put all of the emitted vowels at the end of a footnote. E-E-O-O. -O. Okay then, if you're sure about this, old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. I'm going to shatter you like glass! The key to getting over imposter syndrome is to know everyone else is an imposter too. Tell yourself you deserve a stake in the scam they're all running. Um, excuse me, but this is fucking brilliant. Did you just cure imposter syndrome with spite? You can cure a lot with spite.
Having a monarchy next door is a little like having a neighbor who's really into clowns and has daubed their house with clown murals, displays clown dolls in each window, and has an insatiable desire to hear about and discuss clown-related news stories. More specifically, for the Irish, it's like having a neighbor who's really into clowns and also your grandfather was murdered by a clown. Several people shared this on Twitter, so I'm going to post it here. Absolutely astounding couple of sentences. <laughs> Dishwashing affirmations. The dishes are more scared of you than you are scared of them. If you put on a little song, you can have a dishwashing party. Washing dishes is a great way to make new friends, e.g. frying pans, cups, etc. Despite any misinformation you may see online, a fork has never bitten anyone. They are gentle, even-tempered creatures that often just want to nap. My favorite kid I ever taught when I was a swim teacher was this little four-year-old Italian boy. One time he sneezed and nobody said anything, so he just went, what? No bless yous for Giacomo? My roommate and I quote this all the time, but the name keeps warping more and more every time. <laughs> no dinner for Gabiblio. <laughs> no shower for John the Baptist. <laughs> no gas station Slurpee for Jorbegoth. <laughs> The most unrealistic thing about traditional fantasy as a genre is that if a bitchy little wizard came up to me with a you are the chosen one, chosen to perform free heroic labor spiel, I'd send that cunt packing and return to my personal mundane, but containing Wi-Fi and lacking deadly peril timeline. Thank ye very much. And yet, if the self-same message was delivered by a talking cat, absolutely an automatic acquiescence. No questions asked. Want to make a contract? I have never so instantly regretted a post. Takes away the letter R from you. Good luck writing now, idiot. Now. You think yourself clever? You think yourself bold? You think you can escape the curse? You can't. The curse always takes a victim. I will stwangle you, you waskel. Accept the curse. Oh, I will murder your sorry ass! <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny! Contrary to popular belief, George Lucas says Jedi are allowed to have sex. Jedi Knights aren't celibate. The thing that is forbidden is attachments and possessive relationships. Obi-Wan. The Jedi Council says marriage is a sin. Anakin. What about all your grinder hookups? Obi-Wan. I'm not marrying them. Breaking. Jealous of all the attention the rest of the universe is getting with NASA's fancy new telescope, Jupiter puts on a little hat. Hubble captures vivid auroras in Jupiter's atmosphere. Extreme Jupiter in a tiny cowboy hat made of light voice. Howdy, partners! It's a yarmulke! Jupiter is Jewish! Pass it on! One of us! One of us! Jupiter. Jupiter! Jupiter has become Jewish! A series of unfortunate events is anarchist propaganda because all of the problems are caused by both capitalist bureaucracy and a weird insistence from everybody with power that the rules, no matter how silly, must be followed. I mean, partially, yes, for sure, but Daniel Handler has also stated that the series is a direct allegory for anti-Semitism. My father's family fled Germany in 1938 and 1939, and some of them made it, and some of them didn't, and so I grew up with a close-knit group of actually fairly distant relatives who were all survivors of, I mean, they weren't all survivors of camps by any means, but they were all survivors of getting out of Germany just in time, and I was fed by stories of how good behavior is not necessarily reward and bad behavior is not necessarily punished. So I think that shaped my worldview. I think there is something naturally Jewish about unending misery. Damn, this explains a lot. Some of you just don't know how to say, okay, I didn't know that, sorry, and thank you, to save your souls. Like, I can somewhat understand the defensiveness, but you gotta internalize the fact that you also sound painfully callous and dismissive 
and if that's the hill you want to die on, be my guest and die on it quickly. But if you care about your impact on others, you should learn to be considerate and self-aware. Being right is not as important as being decent. I'm not saying anything groundbreaking like how is that not the bare minimum. I know it's 2am and nobody cares, but I am annoyed, TM. Does anybody ever feel, when waking up in the morning, as if you are some sort of ancient machinery, covered in centuries of rust and plant matter, once again reactivated, with gears turning ever faster, rust being sheared off, the plant matter torn and shredded away, until the machine again runs as it once did? Or is that just me? I think you need a massage, dude. You got me there! Job interviews. Did you mean advanced lying? Small talk. Did you mean normal lying? The concept of the self. Did you mean secret lying? Don't call me out like this. A to-do list. Did you mean aspirational lying? What did I just say? Vampires been drinking human blood for centuries. They don't give a fuck about guys on eight different antidepressants. They were sucking on asbestos factory workers. The absolute hilarity of imagining some older vampires hectoring younger ones. Back in my day, I had to drink blood with radium in it, and I liked it. We glowed in the damn dark for weeks. All the major socials? This fucking website will never die. For future confused Tumblr cockroaches, this post is about Facebook and its affiliated sites, Instagram and WhatsApp, temporarily crashing on October 4th, 2021. We all gather together to celebrate our refusal to fucking die and put a collective middle finger up to Mark Zuckerberg. Like or reblog to flip Mark Zuckerberg off and receive good vibes. Additional context. Apparently this outage is global, longest thus far in Facebook's history, and follows close on the heels of a whistleblower coming forward with proof of Facebook knowing the way their sites run causes harm. Yep, I remember that day pretty well. I was pretty grateful that Tumblr didn't die amongst all of those, but WhatsApp being down really sucked. Well, it's a year later, so happy October 4th! Vampires are probably the least scary monsters. The sunlight kills them and they're extremely allergic to garlic. Am I supposed to be afraid of that? This is like the instructions you get when dog sitting a 17 year old Pomeranian. Girls who learned all their vocab from books and are now constantly embarrassing themselves by pronouncing words slightly wrong in conversation. The way I have to think for a full minute before saying either automaton or banal. <laughs> Until I was 15 years old, I pronounced misled as misled. It offends me to correctly pronounce buried. Scions. I said it completely wrong for years. Catter. Mahogany. Apoplexy. Chasm. Macabre. Unicue. Fatigue. Reprise. Epitome. Colonel. <laughs> Writing is not about telling an epic story or making something that will outlive you. Writing is about going, you know what would be fucking awesome? And then committing word crimes. It's also about going, would this be fucked up or what? And then committing word crimes. My four-year-old points to the label on my tea bag. What does that say? Me. It says, over 300 years of experience. It means the people at Twinings have been making tea for 300 years. Her. Dramatic gasp. They haven't even died? Me. Whispering. Tea vampires. Immortality. You may live forever, but there is a steep cost. <laughs> The most Tumblr punchline. I've noted before that my favorite punchline on Tumblr is, hang on, gotta look something up. Okay, that's funny. Let me explain why. It is a way to say, I don't get it, without blaming the joke or the teller. It is a tacit admission of ignorance without shame or judgment. It assumes responsibility for acquiring the knowledge the respondent doesn't already have. It cues other people who don't get it to do the lookup themselves, allowing them to get that full impact of getting it without derailing the post with explanations. It gives subsequent readers, whether or not they get the joke, a little frisson of good feelings when they realize that someone else is now in on the joke. It not only makes the original joke funnier, it gets funnier the more often it's used! 
Relationships are not a game. Quit the, well, they didn't answer my text for two hours yesterday, so now I'm going to wait two hours to answer theirs. Quit the, I'm not going to tell them that I'm upset, because if they really care, they'll notice, and if they don't notice, they don't really care. Quit the, I'm not going to text first, because it's their turn. Quit all of that. If you want to talk to them, talk to them. If you want to see them, ask them if they want to hang out. If you care about them, let them know. If you have something to say, say it. Stop playing all those silly mind games. It's a waste of everyone's time. My favorite ADHD general executive dysfunction feeling is when you become very consciously aware that you are bored and there is nothing interesting left on the five social media apps you've been cycling around for the past hour, and finally a small logical part of your brain goes, hey, perhaps at this point it might actually be more fun to do one of the productive things you've been putting off, and you're this close to going, oh, huh, yeah, maybe that's true, and getting up to do some housework or read a book or something when a far louder part of your brain goes, no, wait, maybe this time when we refresh Tumblr, it will be interesting again. And you're like, oh, right, sorry for doubting you, boss, and promptly get right back to doing fuck all. How dare you call me out like this? Some of you need to make your bed and have a shower with soap that smells nice, and then sit in a chair near the window and have tea with milk, and read a hardcover book and see how your creative block is after that, to be honest. I'm not saying creative block isn't a real or difficult phenomenon. I'm saying creatives have a tendency to neglect themselves physically and emotionally in favor of manic bursts of productivity. A little softness and clean sheets and a bagel will go a long way. Make a playlist and light the fancy candle you've been saving for a special occasion. Life is a special occasion. Thinking about the time two years ago in AP US history when we had to answer if we thought Lincoln should be regarded as good or bad, and I said, I don't think anyone can be labeled good or bad with a simple binary. People are just too complex. I think it's more constructive to recognize both the achievements and faults of a person together, and to uphold the good they put into the world while condemning their issues, and try to move forward with that knowledge without putting them on a pedestal. And my teacher was like, yes, this exactly. And I never admitted to anyone that I originally came to this philosophy because of Vriska, Vriska, Lincoln. Not to be fake deep, but admitting you fucked up and saying you're sorry is a hundred million times more rewarding than defending flawed views or thoughtlessly, if unintentionally, so actions. 10 out of 10 would recommend. It's not losing face, it's earning respect. This is literally how you know you're an adult. I'm sorry I snapped at you. I'm cranky, but that doesn't excuse taking it out on you. I'm sorry I screwed this vital thing up. I thought I had it under control and didn't. Can we fix it by XYZ? I'm sorry I forgot we had plans tonight. I was distracted, but this is important to you. Let's do the thing. A sincere I'm sorry are two of the most powerful words in the English language. I hate to be this person because I used to roll my eyes at people who told me this, but finally making myself go through uncomfortable situations for the possibility of joy has resulted in me being happier than I ever could have imagined being. I do think that you should always listen to yourself, but I prevented my own happiness for a long time by not knowing how to tell intuition from overthinking and being too afraid and sticking to negative what-ifs when I should have been sticking to positive what-ifs. Not every venture outside your comfort zone will result in some revelation that moves the earth under your feet, but the probability of it is zero if you never venture out. I like Marie Kondo because I'm so used to all the rhetoric around decluttering or tidying up being about how it's somehow immoral to own things and that we need to burn our possessions and all live in sterile minimalist hell in a plain white apartment with a deck chair and one potted plant. So I like hearing the tidy lady tell me that yes, I should live in a hovel with a bunch of linguistics books and dragon statues and here are some ways to keep the hovel clean and orderly while I lurk in it. It's so refreshing. All the other home decor people. Kitschy nerd shit is a waste of space and you're gonna get your soul devoured by a chaos dragon or some shit if you don't get rid of all of it right now. 
Marie Kondo. See, if you organize the kitchen in this way, you can display those corn berserker miniatures far more prominently. The idea that you should model your life after what brings you joy, rather than what society or people think should bring you joy, is an act of rebellion. WoW players having to stand in line for a quest because a relevant NPC can only talk to one player at a time is the funniest image on the planet. I need to correct this. WoW Classic doesn't have any NPCs that can only talk to one player at a time. These lines actually formed for a quest NPC that players had to kill to complete the objective. Knowing that, I think this image is even funnier. <laughs> yep, it's basically like this. Literally this. My favorite is the guy saying, this is like being at the DMV. I'm not a classicist, but I suspect one of the reasons so many of the Greek gods are portrayed so unflatteringly was less because they were seen as villains than because they represented their domains. Of course Zeus sometimes misuses his power, that's what a king does. Of course Artemis's wrath is wild and painful, that's what nature can be. Of course Hades snatched away a young girl from her mother's arms. That's what death does. This is one of the reasons call-out posts for some gods comparing them negatively to nicer gods are kind of missing the point. As someone who is partially a classicist, this is a better analysis of Greek mythology as a whole than 99.95% of the takes I've seen on here, and a substantial number of the takes I've seen in academia. In Kung Fu Panda 2008, we see the Sword of Heroes, which, according to legend, is so sharp one can cut themselves simply by looking at it. This is in reference to- Ow! Fuck! TMI, but I was biting at a cuticle and it came off right as I scrolled down to see this, so technically my skin was severed as soon as I saw this sword! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm immune to mean and hurtful words because my friends say nice things to me every day and their love protects me. I'm immune to mean and hurtful words because my friends say mean things to me so I'm prepared. I'm immune to mean and hurtful words because nothing anyone can say will be as bad as what I've said to myself. I'm immune to mean and hurtful words because my constant state of fury doesn't allow them to take hold. I'm immune to mean and hurtful words because I don't take shit on the internet seriously. I'm a weak ass bitch, but I don't let it get me down. Tag yourself in the comments. Which one are you? All ten of my followers are actually hostages I have tied up in an abandoned green silo and am monologuing to. It's a very good monologue. Thank you, hostage number three. It's true, I'm currently tipping myself over to lick grain off the floor. I am just pretending to be tied up because of peer pressure. The acoustics in here really adds to the dynamic quality of your monologue. Is it wrong to willingly want to be your hostage? Never before has the world seen such well-behaved and cooperative hostages. This is great. I'm gonna get a good grade in hostage. Any noun can become a verb if you don't care enough. This point is invalid unless you use an example in your sentence. I can sentence how I want, thank. Beautiful. You see, that's why I love English. I like to velociraptor around my house at 2 in the morning. Good. My headache makes me want to clothesline into a wall. Why do these make some semblance of sense? Because brains don't brain logically. Brains do brain logically. But when English doesn't logic Englishly, brain brains by itself to logic that English. I hate that this makes sense. That's English for you. So are you an obsessing over minor background characters who you find more compelling than the nominal protagonist due to a coincidental intersection of experiences fan? Or an anchoring your entire understanding of the material in random world building details which the text is thoroughly uninterested in exploring and which probably had no greater thought put into them than, hey, wouldn't it be cool if, fan? What is a minor background character if not a world building detail the text is uninterested in exploring? Good point, actually. The brain is just eight pounds of meat that sits in complete darkness and plays a video game of what it thinks is the most realistic thing ever. It's three pounds, not eight. Also, it's not really meat, it's mostly fat with some water and salt. You have a wad of soggy bacon inside your skull. And this blob of gross, unprocessed jello somehow manages to run a complex biomechanical suit using less electricity than it takes to work a light bulb. And people wonder why humans are so fucking weird and have odd experiences that aren't actually real. 
I mean, if a bowl of tapioca pudding managed to hallucinate so vividly, it invented calculus, it also going, dude, I heard a weird noise and I'm 100% sure it was the ghost of the neighbor's cat, which hasn't actually died yet, would be just as expected as anything else. OMFG, dying. <laughs> I had three fic ideas. Wrote one. I still have three fic ideas. This is not how math is supposed to work. Can this post please back up? It's too close to home. I had five ideas. I wrote two. Now I have seven. Listen, they're called plot bunnies for a reason. And it's not just because they hop around all over your brain demanding attention. 99 fanfic ideas on my blog. 99 fanfic ideas. Take one down, pass it around. 137 fanfic ideas on my blog. This post walked into my house and kicked in my ribs. So we have a very interesting picture here. It says English French toast, even though it doesn't look like French toast on the inside. It says American. There's a picture of pizza on the corner, even though this really doesn't look like it's selling pizza. There's Japanese lettering on the top and the bottom. I'm assuming that's some form of kanji or something. And then you have made in China in the bottom right. My goodness. What makes it additionally worst is the red banner says German style. And isn't that the flag of Spain? This is a triumph of globalism. Indeed it is. <laughs> what a disaster. Oh my god. The worst part of human adulthood is being your own zookeeper. Like, I have to make sure my meals are nutritionally balanced. I have to make sure that the space I occupy is big enough and interesting enough and provide enrichment to make up for the lack of novelty. I have to make sure I get exercise. I'm not qualified for this. Bro, I have to make sure I get to my own vet visits. I have to push myself into a carrier and I don't want to get in the carrier. Why would you abandon this in the tags? Tis the season. Pooas, pooas. Trick or treat. Sruki. Trick or treat. Creepy. Do. Creary. Happy Halloween. Trick or trot. Ten fuckering lights. No, wait, if you look really closely, it is ten flickering lights, but oh my god, no one's gonna see that with that with the letters that close together. <laughs> Come on. I put a spell on Yoi. Time to get spoopy. 